Hi, I'm going to be showing you the first in my new, the first video in my new series of how to get ready for your babies to come. So the first thing that we need to think about is if you have a milking dough that is pregnant, then you want to dry her up in time for the babies. So that's what this video is about. And it also talks about dry treating. For those of you that don't know what dry treating is, it talks about what it is and why I do it. A lot of people breed their does and dry them up early. I tend to um, keep my does milking for 10 months of the year approximately, depending on when they kid and when they're bred. Um, so, you know, if they're, if they're three months pregnant, they sh in my opinion, they should be dry. I'm not a vet, so I don't, I don't uh, want to give you veterinarian health information. And, but I'm just letting you know this is what I do with my herd is I like to dry them up at three months pregnant so that they can put uh, everything they have into that last two months while the babies are growing so quickly. So um, sometimes it's difficult to encourage them to dry up. So ours are actually bred to milk really good. Sometimes they are hard to dry up. Um, so a few months or a few weeks before they're three months pregnant, then I, I cut their feed. And you don't have to worry about this being a problem with the babies because hopefully the doe is in good enough condition that she can, you know, handle growing the babies. It will help her not to be milking. So you want to cut the feed. You're not going to be graining her. I wouldn't recommend graining her the last two months after she's dry anyway because you don't want too big of babies. So you want to be taking her off grain anyway. So you cut the grain. I tend to give them enough to eat while I'm milking. I milk pretty quick, so that's not very much grain compared to their normal amount. If you're a slow milker, then you might want to put a brick or something in the feed box, or the feed bowl, to make it a little more difficult for them to eat their grain so they eat less while you're milking. But the idea is to cut their feed down to a minimum. That should get them to lower their milk. And the second thing that I tend to do is I mess their milking times up. Now normally, I encourage everybody to milk 12 hours apart, be fairly steady with your routine, as close to 12 hours apart as you can, normal time, day and, day and evening, you know, whatever time works best for you, but try to keep it at 12 hours apart, and that helps them milk their best. Well, at this time, you want to mess their milking up. So for instance, I have one doe right now that is still milking every day, I am trying to get her to slow up. She's she's still milking five pounds a day, and I am milking her between five and six at night and 10 and 11 in the morning. So I'm totally mixing her times up. She's still stubborn, which is a good trait, but it's time to dry up. She's past her three months, and I'm still working on it. And with her being a first freshener, I'm very impressed with that, but she has to quit now. <laughs> so so anyway, but you, you know, messed her times up. That should help them to lower when they get to where you can do milk once a day and they're not uncomfortably full, then drop them to once a day. And then basically when they're lowered their milk some more, go a day and a half, go two days, three days, you get the picture. So um, you want to, you want to, you know, space their milkings out farther and farther. When you're three, four, five days and they're only doing a pound or two a day, you can quit milking at that point. They've slowed up enough that they're going to dry up. Um, at, at that point, that is when I have, I, I dry treat my does. That's, you do it the very last milking. When they're ready to dry up, you're going to milk them one last time. If you choose to dry treat, that is when you do it. I didn't always dry treat. I didn't for years. Um, we moved somewhere that was a little muddy and we got a couple cases of mastitis. So I dry treated anybody that had mastitis. I now am on milk test, so I actually can see the somatic cell count, and if it's a high somatic cell count, I would dry treat. I finally, after talking to other people that would have those milk fine, and then come spring, they would freshen and have 
mastitis and other other issues, I decided I was just going to dry treat everybody. So I treat, do dry treat all my does. Um, what dry treating is, is the last time you milk them, you have an antibiotic that you milk, that you always milk them first so it opens the orifice, the little hole at the end of the teat. And you milk them out and you insert this antibiotic and you squirt it into their udder and massage it into their udder. And what it does, you don't melt, you don't milk it back out. You leave it in. What that does is any bacteria that may be up there in their udder, it will fight and get rid of. So that you, in the spring when the dough freshens, it's a healthier udder, and hopefully no issues when they kid. And that's the reason for dry treating. That's how you do it. I'm going to show a video that um, it's our doe Jackie when I dry treated her recently and it shows you how it's done but that's the reason that you do it it's not something you have to do um, i would recommend it not as a vet but as a fellow breeder i would recommend it if you've had a doe with mastitis to dry treat her when you're finished just to help make sure everything's straightened out before she kids in the spring the babies will be able to drink the milk no problem in the spring i hope that the video is helpful to you so i'm gonna milk Jackie out. She is almost dry and uh, then I'm going to dry treat her. And there is, that's what I use. There are different different types. Sorry it's upside down. That's what I use. Last time I'll be milking Jackie the ship. her milk so we know there's she's not going to be making more we still get all the milk out that we can and no they don't like this at all so you want to do it quick you find the end of their teeth you insert it in and you push the plunger and get it all in their teeth. And then you can also, if needed, get a light. So that you can see the hole a little better. And then you get it in and push it in. And again, I like to get the end of the teeth and that's like that. Massage it in. And she is all done for the year. So I hope that's been helpful and uh, in, and that you enjoyed watching the video and learning this. And, and I will be um, doing more on preparing for the babies to come. And the next video that I plan on doing is I've been, um, I need to train my dry yearlings to go up in the milking stand. And I'll share some videos about that so that if you have a dry yearling and you or a dry doe that you have bred, she's not, not milking, not trained to be milked. Hopefully it'll be a helpful video because uh, when I first got into goats, I didn't realize that you have to train them. And so I did rodeo milking the first year, which was not fun. So now I train my dry yearlings so that by the time they freshen, they're used to everything and they aren't a problem and they don't kick. I will show you that video in a while. I'm working on that now. So hopefully that will be helpful for those of you that don't have milking does that you're getting ready for. I'll talk to you later and thanks for watching. Have a great day.